Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, AAMP TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all natural, dry aged USDA Prime Angus and Wagyu steaks and chops. Wait till you try their best in class New York steaks, the filet mignon, and of course, the king of all, those massive cowboy cut and tomahawk cut ribeyes best in a business I've ever seen, probably be the best you've ever had as well. Everything USDA Prime, not choice, all prime. Find out what's for dinner at uppercutchops.com by calling 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 for uppercutchops.com. And a big round of applause for everybody tuning in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and our independents from coast to coast. Everybody also watching on Cox Comcast Spectrum Frontier, Time Warner, Wow Cable. Thanks for joining us also in Hotel TV in over 600,000 rooms from coast to coast. Tuning in, and guess what? We have a very special guest, and let's let him introduce himself. Go ahead. So, this is Mark Collins, two-time Super Bowl champion of the New York Football Giants, 13-year NFL career, and I'm glad to be on your show. <laughs> I always say New York football giants, right? Because we don't want to confuse them with other giants, because there might be some. Well, the reason they, you know, the reason they did that, right? Because the San Francisco Giants, before they were San Francisco Giants, were in New York. So they had to uh, make, make a distinctive uh, name change for one or the other. So the New York Giants added the football giants instead of the baseball giants. And that's why they got the name. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of people don't know that, and I'm glad you clarified that because, frankly, they need to know, and I think it's great that you've cleared that up. All right, so <laughs> listen, welcome to the show. It's always great to have you on, and, and any of your former New York football giants, we've had plenty of them on, and we like having them on because it always sparks a lot of good defensive discussions. And, of course, for me, look, I'm a Bears guy. The Bears stink okay. right now, and that's okay. The world knows it. <laughs> it it's okay. But the, the first thing that always comes to mind, of course, 85 Bears, 86 Giants. I mean, defense, and then we talk about the Ravens down the road. But that's kind of a different era from the Ravens side. We're talking 15-plus years down the road. Maybe it was a grinding, grueling game, but it seems to me that those mid-'80s teams played a little bit heavier, harder-hitting defense. What do you think? I, I concur, uh, but I, I'll, let, me, let, let, me, let me back up a little bit. The Bears don't stink. I mean, they're just having, having a lot of great seasons. But, you know, uh, you talk about the 85 Bears. That, I mean, and, and I can say this because, arguably, I played on probably, and it's debatable, the one of the best defenses in the NFL history. Uh, we talk about the Ravens. The Ravens, statistically, yes, they're in a conversation with the Bears and the Giants. Uh, and the 49ers have some great defenses as well. But I had a conversation with uh, Richard Dent one time in a golf tournament. And we're in this, this car, car service, picked us both up, we're going to the, to the uh, hotel. <coughs> and he had his Bears rings, big ring on, I have my Giants ring. But we had a little conversation back and forth about it. And uh, I said, well, you know, you, team was great. So was ours. But you guys didn't validate that Super Bowl because you didn't win another one, you know, after that. We won another one three or four years afterwards. So we validated that Super Bowl. The Bears never validated. So I said, Richard, you got to give your ring back. He got mad. But we were just joking. But anyway, you know, we had the great defenses. And the Ravens defense as well, the great defense. But when you think about it, I mean, when you really think about it, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, the Giants defenses back in those days played solid quarterbacks. The Bears' defense has played solid quarterbacks. The Ravens' defense played guys like Spurgeon, Wynn, and a bunch of, back, bunch of backup quarterbacks and knocked them out. And then you're supposed to win those games like that. So statistically, yeah, looks great. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. But we're talking devastating defense yeah. that would make people – I mean, look, look from Marshall and Lawrence Taylor – and Carl Banks and Harry Carson, 
I mean, all four of those guys, not three, should be in the hall. Leonard Marshall hopefully will get his run into the yeah. hall as well. But look at the defense from top to bottom. Man, those guys were pretty damn good, even at the corner position, as I understand. Yeah, we were solid. I mean, we yeah. were solid defense. And, you know, our linebackers get all, all the glory, which is fine. I never cared about that. Neither did Perry Williams, my my other, uh, other side corner. As long as we got wins and got rings out the deal, that's all that counts. So right. that's how we looked at it. Yeah, and, and honestly, I think a lot of the people, when they try to compare this team to that team to whatever team, they seem to forget, look, it's a business. Yeah, it's a different system. This system is good over here. This system is good over here. And you know, Mark, when I think about drafting, and I, I'd like your opinion on this, when I think about certain teams that will draft the best athlete left on the board, that doesn't mean it's going to be the best fit for the system, now does it? It doesn't, but what teams usually do, I mean, from what I've seen and what I went through, not just going from uh, – uh, I'll push on that a little later. But uh, when the when the Giants drafted me and when teams draft a certain player, it's got to fit their system. There's, there's got to be a need for that position. And that corner, linebacker, whoever, whatever position on, on, you know, on defense, must fit the mindset of that coordinator. Same on offense. It's the same thing. And now you fast forward it, and the same mindset goes to free agency. You want to go after a free agent that fits the mentality and mode of your coordinator or offensive defense and the mentality of your team. That's how it usually works. That's how it should work. And we had a situation back in free, uh, free agency called Plan B where the, 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 the teams discarded their worst seven players <laughs> of, the, of the team. The other teams pick them up and get more money, which was a debacle. And we, we got some players from other teams that were making more money than me and other linebackers on our team, but they were backups. So that's a whole other conversation. But they didn't fit our system anyway. But, you know, that's how it worked out. Well, thinking about financial disparity between how the players are paid and, yeah, it could create some, I don't know, it could create a little bit of ill will, I guess, if people take it a little bit personal like that, financially that is, right? Here you got yeah. a guy being paid $10 million who hasn't contributed to the team, but then you got a guy being paid a million dollars that's contributing his ass off on a week-to-week -week basis, on a practice-to-practice -practice basis on top of it. And how does how do you get past it as looking up and down your roster, maybe the guys that have been there for three, four, five years, now you get Joe Blow that comes in, he's a new guy, and he's being paid three times as much as everybody else, and he's not contributing to the team. And well, when he that, has that had an opportunity, how do you get past that? Well, you get past it because the animosity doesn't go towards the player. It never does. It never does. It goes to the organization. It goes to the coach. It, that's how I know I went through it one year with the Giants. We got a, we got a player who came over from Miami. He made more money than me. I'm I'm the, you know starting corner of the New York Giants. I got a ring under my belt. I, I love the guy. I still love the guy. There was no animosity towards him. Right. This was the organization. Because my thing was, I can't worry about what they're paying him. And a lot of players would say to the same thing. I'm not worried about what they pay him. I'm gonna do my job. I'm going to do it well, and I'm going to get paid and make them pay me even more. Right. You know, Mark, when I think about the NIL money in college these days, and it's, look, for the, for the regular player that's on a particular team, they say, well, this guy's getting paid this much money. I'm not getting paid any money. Well, look, that's on you. That's on you. Just go out there and do your job. Maybe somebody will throw money at you. I don't know. But a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of times athletes get caught up with looking around instead of being the person looked at in the first place, working a little bit harder to be looked at or whatnot. And the only way that, that I see a lot of these players, they will go and make a spectacle of themselves. Maybe they'll score a touchdown or whatever. They're down by 30. Look at me, look at me. I'm doing some crazy end zone celebration. It's like, bro, your team is down by 30. What are you doing dancing around in there? Get your ass back in that huddle and let's go. Is that, is that a fair statement? You know, it's a fair statement, but one thing about the NIL, and, and I hope they clean it up a little bit. First of all, everybody thinks the NIL, everybody's in, in, in college sports making money. That's not true. Uh, you, you have the Power Five conferences. 
especially on the football side, those guys are going to make their money. Then you got the, on the female part, the female side of the NIL in, in NCAA, some of the bigger, the smallest schools, the, the, the student athletes aren't making any money. I got a son in Murray State. He's not making any money. Go ahead, go ahead, Sal. Oh, no, I was just letting you know that uh, the segment's going to come to an end in about a minute. So that's why I said okay. one minute. Now you're good. Yeah. So, so that's what I'm saying. So the NIL, they don't clean it up, but I'm glad that the NCAA. Uh, has given all these athletes, college athletes, some stipend money so they can live uh, pretty much some spending money outside their, their scholarship so they can make money. Now, NIL, that's an added bonus, but the other stipend money that college athletes get uh, helps them out tremendously because all uh, college players are not making NIL money. Right. You know, when we come back from break, I want to talk a little bit more about that NIL thing because there is an enormous disparity from school to school to school to conference. So you know that. You come from a smaller school. Hey, listen, I went to a smaller school too, one of them anyway. I went to two Power 5 schools on top of that, but it is what it is, man. We're going to be back here with the great Mark Collins, two-time Super Bowl champion from the New York Football Giants. In just a few moments, folks, don't go anywhere. Lots more to come. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. AMP, the multi-format network, is here to help create, produce, distribute, and sell your content. For more information, send a message to info at aamp.tv. That's info at aamp.tv. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. Now 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Nuri Master Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP TV. Stands for All Ages Media Programming, Television, in case you're keeping score. Folks, this segment brought to you in part by our two-time Super Bowl champion guest. That would be Mark Collins from the New York Football Giants. Mark, how does everybody follow you? Well, they can follow me, Sal, on Twitter at 25 Sports, the number 2, F-I-V-E Sports. On Instagram, same thing, the number two, FIVE Sports. And on Facebook, just Mark Collins. That's how easy that was, folks. Listen, if you ever want to take a class on how to speak on television or radio, contact that gentleman, Mark Collins. He will school you on how to do this because he's an expert at it. And he's been in the rodeo for a minute. And a big welcome back to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and our independents from coast to coast, including our friends, over in Honolulu on CBS Sports 1500 KHKA. That's home of the New York Yankees and, of course, the San Francisco 49ers. And a big welcome to everybody right here in Las Vegas, KGPT Jackpot Radio and also KVGK 97.9 FM over in Atlanta, WDJY, Auburn, Alabama, home of the Atlanta Braves, WAUD, and a whole bunch, WBGY in Southwest Florida. Folks, we're everywhere. You can't get away from us. Also, welcome back to everybody on Cox Comcast Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, Wow Cable Television, and Hotel TV from coast to coast, as well as the Mars Rover. <laughs> So anyway, so we were talking, Mark, in the last segment, we left off with name, image, and likeness money for everybody who's been living under a rock. And we didn't really see this legalized until just recently. And Mark, Mm -hmm. what is NIL money in a quick 10-second summary? Oh, I think it it gives players a little money in their pocket and to take on their own likeness and get money from themselves. Other than giving it all to the colleges, because for years, uni- college and universities making tons of money on athletes. Well, what about the idea back when you were playing way back in the day in the way back time machine over at Cal State Fullerton? Yes, folks, they did have a football team, and this guy was a fine pretty- academic institution, by the way. And, and- Just you know that. <laughs> Like, you know, that's a fine academic institution. Buddy, I have no qualms about that. That's one of mine, and that that's one of mine right there. Okay, okay, you're bragging now. You, well, come on, man. You got the Super Bowl rings. Show those Super Bowl rings. You got them on you. You don't have them on. I don't, well, no. no. I, 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 but, you, but you got that big cigar. You got that You got that thing going, and that substitutes for it right now, if you know what I mean. But anyway, no, the reality is back when you were playing at Cal State Fullerton, Look, there may have been some sparse whatever figment of a booster money campaign somewhere. Not like Ohio State that has a hundred odd hundred twenty million dollar recruiting budget. I mean, mm-hmm. go back in the day and look, folks, this is a full time job playing sports and somehow you gotta fit your schoolwork in. What was the workload like for you from workload and school and workload from sports? let alone sleeping and eating? Oh, I mean, it was, it was tremendous. It was hard. I mean, but as a freshman, when I first went in, it was easy, right? Because, you know, you go in, you're taking 12, we were all semester at Fullerton. So you go in, you take, you got your practice, two a days, we're back in those days, two a day practices. And then the class <coughs> starts, and you take 12 units, right? So you 12 units and we travel for football. It was, it was, it was cool. It was hard, but it was cool. I, I managed it. And then come the second semester, you got to double, not double up on, on, on uh, units. I took, I think, 16 in the off season. So I did that. And then we had spring ball, and I, I kind of slacked off a little bit because I took it for granted how, how easy school was that first semester. So the second semester... I kind of, my grades dropped dramatically. Um, But I got them on course and did okay. So anyway, but it's hard. It was hard to manage both because you had to go to school and you got to practice. And you better do well at both because back in those days, if you didn't pass classes, they took your scholarship away from you. so now it's a little different now, but the, the workload has always been hard. So as you said, they would 
take your scholarships away. Could you imagine today with the, and I'm going to just come right out and say it, the interference of the NIL money, which comes from the boosters, which was illegal money in the first place back in the day. What, what a what a weird world we live in with this, right? Because you couldn't take money from boosters, but now you can, but it has to go through the school so they get their cut. And then they divide it down amongst the other athletes. Well, also, Sal, what a player can do is go and negotiate with, go, no, negotiate with a local chain of restaurants or fast whatever to be their spokesman for a burger shop in Fullerton or a, a bar and whatever. They can make money off that as well. I think it's great. It give, uh, to me, it gives a student athlete uh, the opportunity of being uh, a bit of an entrepreneur, number one. Number two, taking, care, taking ownership of their own brand. Uh, number three, getting money that they work for by being a, a spokesman to earn. I think it's great. You know, I would Coaches argue. have been doing it for years. Mark, I would argue that these student athletes are going to learn a lot more in their own negotiating, in business and marketing, <laughs> that they would in some classes in yes. the first place. Yes, yes. That's real That's world. Yes, real world work right there. The entrepreneurial stuff. That, that's what I'm saying. They could do it. So why not? I mean, now, look, look, okay, Sal, when we were in school, we didn't have these major streaming services, right? There's no YouTube. Correct. None of that stuff. Now these kids could put their likeness on, on, and, and blast it out to all over the world, basically, and, and monetize it. I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that they actually have control of a lot of their things for their future, their future financial. Maybe they have kids. Maybe they have started families when they're 17, 18 years old. It happens. Life happens. Yeah. And so now they actually have a way to fulfill for the family instead of just doing what they do and then depending on a system to try to feed their families, right? Because, oh, you can't work. But wait a minute. Maybe you couldn't work, but now you have the NIL opportunity. And so I look at it from a different lens and say, okay, great. You're not going to let these kids work, but now they're technically working for themselves. So yeah. I wonder if the government would give them a tax break because there's an educational aspect to this. Or do the players, the student athletes, have to start their own foundations? Huh? start their own foundations, have the monies paid to their foundations, and they can be employees of their foundations and paid a reduced rate as a student athlete. There's so many different business ways to look at this. I mean, I think a lot of people are kind of missing the boat of what this is all about. Yeah, I, I think those are great options. I think uh, great ideas. I think if I was to tell, I'll tell my sons if they were to get this kind of stuff, just start an LLC. It's much simpler. Uh, foundations, they really, I mean, over the last pretty much 10 years, the government has really cracked down on the foundations because they found a lot of scams going on. But uh, just a simple, basic LLC uh, probably works best. Right. I think a, a limited liability company in a state tax-free state, for example, like Nevada or Wyoming or Florida or Tennessee, or Maryland, Delaware, or, uh, yeah. Delaware, they all work. And this is another thing that these student athletes can learn about on the business side, because let's face it, even if you are a doctor, you still need to know how business works because there's still money involved. And a lot of people miss that boat. They do. Uh, and that, that's something that, I'm a communications major, but Same I here. also know business. Yeah, you as well, I know. And uh, I also, even though my, my I think I was maybe 30, 35. I went to Babson, Babson College in Boston for business. Nice. And just to, you know, you think you know a lot of stuff. So I went there and enrolled and was there for two months and really opened my mind up on business even more. So I, I think if, if, if these students and athletes would do something like that, get a, get a hold of somebody in business, uh, go do, a, do an internship. I don't care where you do learn about doing the nuances one of the things that i hope they learn during this whole process as they get as nil starts to really grab and hold they need to know about the tax implications of it that's the big thing about it uh because if you screw that up that can ruin you for life on back taxes 
Because once they get the hooks in you, it's hard to get them off. Right, especially with the 80-odd thousand new IRS agents that have been implemented or whatever. I, look, the reality is what Mark is saying is 100% correct because, folks, if you don't understand tax strategy and you don't understand how to maneuver through the weeds of the IRS, you will be shackled to them potentially for the rest of your life. And here, I'm going to close this segment out with this statement, folks. In case you don't know, just in case you don't know, the reality is the IRS answers to whom? That would be the Federal Trade Commission. If the Federal Trade Commission has a lien on you for anything, it will follow you and every <laughs> asset you touch for the rest of your life. And if you try to transfer that asset, now the person acquiring the asset has to clear it with the Federal Trade Commission. They have to end up paying the debt. So they're made whole on this. So if you think you can get out of it, you cannot get out of it. I promise you that. Folks, we're going to be back here with Mark Collins, two-time Super Bowl champion from the New York Football Giants in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come here on the Sports Circus. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. My favorite one had to do with the Green Bay Packers. And I love the fact that they dealt off Ty Montgomery because of a blown assignment. Green Bay isn't Green Bay unless they have a good running game. Then they can win 10 Super Bowls. The fact is, you don't have a running game. You've got 70% passing, and that's not where Aaron Rodgers needs to be. He needs to be in a position where he's got a running game to offset the passing game and so forth. I like the move. Green Bay didn't have a running game anyway, so all they're doing is saying, we're going to get rid of you because you don't follow instructions. Well, he made one of the most boneheaded plays I've ever seen. There's two minutes and five seconds on the clock. They traded him they on Tuesday. They should have cut him on Sunday he night. He shouldn't have been on the plane back to Green Bay. Right, they should have made him walk back yeah, to Green Bay. No, it was a terrible play. Now, he's not a stupid guy. He went to Stanford. Really? He's not a dumb guy. He's not a dumb guy, but he doesn't he, follow instructions. He made a terrible play. The fact is he didn't follow instructions. And you say he's not a dumb guy. His own agenda he put ahead of his team. I agree. Thus, he is a dumb guy, right or wrong? Wrong. He just got selfish. He, you're not going to convince me that a guy from Stanford's a dumb dumb. No! <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Sidney Justin from the Miracles. So you heard yesterday's show at Roy Firestone. You, did you hear a little clip about him going into the office where Smokey was at? And that was really good material, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really funny, man. Yeah, and then you heard him. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was cool, though. It was cool. Really cool story, man. I, I enjoyed listening to that. Right, and then he gave a little bit of, a couple of bars. Can you give us a couple of more from Ooh Baby Baby? And let's see if you could do it better than Roy Firestone. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, you know what? Why not? Uh... I did you wrong, my heart went out to play, but in the game I lost you, what a price to pay, hey, I'm crying, ooh, baby, baby. How's that, man? That's Is incredible. that okay? Is that good enough? That's incredible. That's fantastic. You know why? Because that's what you do. You're in the incredible business, Sid. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Only at the sports circus. You're going to get sports? You get music? Hey, everybody. This is Barry Katz from the Industry Standard Podcast, and you're listening to the Sports Circus with Sal Tuzzolino.
back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, AAMP TV. This segment brought to you in part by Kelly Vegas, helping people create and host their very own radio, TV, or multimedia talk show. Kelly Vegas can help them with everything they need to get out of sitting in hours of traffic, commuting back and forth to see a more boring job, and host their very own talk show in their very own home studio. For more information, contact Kelly Vegas at info at kellyvegas.com. That's I-N-F-O at C-A-L-I Vegas dot com. Yes. All right. Welcome back to everybody. You know who you are. TV, radio. We're here with our very special guest. That'd be two-time Super Bowl champion from the New York football giants. That'd be Mark Collins. In fact, I believe he was an interception leader also in the college football arena as well. Correct? That is correct. 20 career interceptions at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, ranked number 10, tied for 10 or 11 in, the, in interceptions in NCAA history. That is huge to me. That, that, <laughs> listen, that's enormous. In fact, we'll even give you a round of applause for that. So, thank you, Mark, thank you. <laughs> absolutely. We've got more of that if you'd like it. <laughs> okay, so listen to this. In break, we were talking about this amusement or sports tax, whatnot. So yeah. people have asked the question. Now, I just did a quick search on this. It says, owners, managers, operators of amusements or places where amusements are conducted and ticket resellers shall collect from patrons for witnessing or participating in amusements. It is an astounding ridiculous, recoculous, 9%. Are you kidding me? How did I find out about this for everybody just tuning in? So on a trip to Chicago, not too terribly long ago, I went to go book a round of golf, me being one of the world's worst golfers, that's okay. And it happened that I said, well, how much are the green fees? So the, the guy at the golf place told me, and I he goes, oh, by the way, there's also a 9% sports tax. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, here in the city of Chicago and the surrounding area in Cook County, we have to pay this thing. And, of course, my answer to him was, show me the money! Because <laughs> that's all they care about. Mark, is, is, there a, is there a bigger way to disincentivize people from doing healthy things or enjoying their lives? Well... So, as I asked you during the break, who passed that thing? Because you just can't implement a tax without it being on the, on the ballot to vote for it. I'll give you a better story. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a better story, Sal. All right. And with the Giants, we play in the Eagles in Philly. And we always go, we take the bus down, go over the uh, Thomas, Thomas Jefferson Bridge, stay in Philly, play the game, and go back. This particular time, not think it was 1988 or 89, I forget the year. After the game, we go down and play the Eagles. They give us our checks right after the game. So I, get my, I always get my check. I open to see what I made. So I saw a tax on there. I was a, I, it was an entertainment tax. So I went to Well and Tamara, and I asked him, what is this tax? He didn't know. He did not know. So I guess... Philly started doing, having an entertainment tax. They, they tax you based on the time you spend in the city to the time you leave. We would take a bus to Philly, stay in Philly. It starts there until the game's over. After that happened, every other team, every other city started doing that. Now it's probably that now. Every team does it. From football players, uh, singers, uh, entertainers, well, we got an in, in, entertainment tax. So in 1989, we played the Eagles. We stayed in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, the night before the game. Dro we got dressed at, at the state. Well, we got dressed at the stadium. We we had our meetings in Jer in Jersey. Drove over to the uh, the stadium, played for four or five hours, got back on the bus, went back to Cherry Hill, and then back up to to East Rutherford. So they taxed us on five or six hours instead of a day. So back to your point, that entertainment tax, whatever it is, the damnedest thing. I've ever heard. Okay, so now the state of Illinois, in their infinite wisdom, 
they had this amusement tax. And the amusement tax was adopted by the city to tax excessive amusement at a 4% of gross receipts. Now, why does the city of Chicago have an amusement tax? They say, according to taxpolicycenter.org, a credible source, cities typically levy amusement taxes on big events because they attract a lot of people to the city. While cities love all economic activities the crowd brings, the influx of people also strains city services and cities want to collect tax revenue beyond their oh, traditional gosh. sales tax to cover that inconvenience. What? Is this the crap. biggest crock of crap you've ever heard? <laughs> what? Buddy, 9%. I mean, how? Listen, I just want to know, in good conscience, how do they disincentivize people by taking 9% of their money because they're going to go watch something that gives them pleasure? And, and benefits the city. So they're just greedy. They're going to get money regardless just for people being there staying in hotels, renting cars, buying food. It helps the local community, uh, restaurants and everything. But that's not enough. We want 9%. Yeah. Well, you get it. Isn't this other enough for you? Greedy bastards. Right. And you wonder why the bears are moving out of downtown Chicago. Frankly, I don't blame them. Yeah. They, they ought to move to Indiana or to Wisconsin or something where it's less corrupt. My home state of Illinois is the most corrupt in all of them. And you know, by the way, in case you don't know, in case the audience doesn't know, the name Windy City for Chicago is not because the city actually has a lot of wind. No, it's actually because of what? The politicians. That's why the name Windy City was actually devised. That's how it was formed, in case you didn't know that. I did not know that. There you go. I mean, yeah, it is a little breezy. Sal? This is a very informative show. I'm telling you. Make sure you tell your friends and family. Join the sports circus. We're <laughs> Listen, we're a circus and we prove it every day. We don't edit the content. It is what it is. We don't prepare. We just have a conversation. You got Mark over here, two-time Super Bowl champion. He's blowing on his cigar over there, having a good old time. And you know what? <laughs> Life is great because we get to talk about stuff that other people are too damn scared to talk about. Oh, because they're going to lose yeah. sponsorships and all this other BS. Is that a fair statement? <laughs> that is fair. And I concur. Yes, I concur. Kind of like that movie, Catch Me If You Can, when... Leo DiCaprio was a doctor. Do you concur? Yes, I concur. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, I, I think where, where the cities are going wrong with this and where the states are going wrong, they're trying to collect on what everybody is doing out there. Instead of live and let live, they're politicizing everything and saying, well, you can't do this without paying here and there. And that, in my opinion, is counterintuitive to what humans do in the first place. It is, but, you know, just... Let's talk about marijuana, right? At some point, I know I knew it was going to be legal. Once, once the cities and the governments and states find a way to tax it, you knew it was going to happen. Same thing in sports. They can implement all kinds of taxes. They, okay, they, they tax the tickets prices to, to the hill. They tax uh, rental cars to the hill. How else can we make more money? Hmm, let's conjure up a entertainment tax. Oh, let's do that. Because before that, Became a consumption tax. You buy you buy a beer, you buy bottled water, you pay a consumption tax on that. So what the hell is that all about? Just weird stuff. <laughs> it's stupid. I'm one of those. So I'm one of those guys. I, I I do the deep dive. I like to read stuff and trying to figure why 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 is it that this is happening. That's me though. I, Buddy, I, Go ahead. I, I got to tell you, man, I'm the same way in our last minute of the segment or so. I feel the same way because, look, stop trying to rip everybody off. Let people go about their business. How do you expect to have healthy people? Oh, that's right. They don't want healthy people. They want them in the hospital so they can make money off of meds and all this other garbage. Let's see how many ways that we can make money off of every individual. Let's keep them unhealthy. Let's not get them exercising. Let's sit them in front of a TV so all they do is what? Well, hopefully they'll watch the sports circus if you know what I mean, right? <laughs> but more importantly, but let's, let's get them watching TV and not exercising so they become dependent 
on our medical system and take the pills that we're taxing the daylights out of and everything else yeah. that is so ass backwards. I have to say that is now the American way as it stands. And I hate the fact that it's that way, but it's just the way it goes. Take 10 seconds. Talk about that. Let's go to break. I, let, 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 I, I don't want to make this show another show. We, we have a segue back to sports in some element, and I got the perfect topic when we come back. Oh, can you give me a preview? Basketball. Basketball. Oh, okay. We could talk baskets. We could talk about ba- and we're going to leave it right there because I will I will go during the break and ask you a couple questions. Everybody, listen, if you're streaming right now, for all our friends and family and whatnot, stick around and you might get a preview of what's coming up in the next segment right here on the Sports Circus. Back here at two-time Super Bowl champion, that would be Mark Collins from the New York Football Giants. Back in a few. <laughs> That's our economy in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh my God. That's fun, man. I'm I'm having fun with this. This is what I do every day. That's fun. Yeah, yeah so I was basketball. So I, I'm talking to some friends of mine. And these guys, oh, Jokic is the best center ever. I'm like, what? He's the best. Oh, he's this, this. I'm going, dude, either you guys don't know basketball or you just stupid. <laughs> it's just. I think it's all of the above. Top of the conversation. All of the above. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's a whole whole different animal. And just because it's what's going on now doesn't mean it's That's the greatest what, of all time. Yeah. Right? I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah. There, there are so many people that say the whole James Jordan thing, whatever. It's like, bro, they're in two different worlds. Jordan was the best player at both ends of the court, on offense yeah. and defense. We haven't seen that since Wilt Chamberlain. <sighs> Right? Probably. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so it's please just hold my beer and let's look at the record. <laughs> uh, it's always good to debate people like that, though, because being an older guy, I throw a little history at them, and then you find out some people don't care about history. They go, Oh, I didn't know that. But do a little research, then you'll know. But it's amazing. Yeah. So I like to do the basketball. I, like, I love basketball. I love, uh, I love women's softball. I love watching Oh, that. yes. Oklahoma's awesome. Oklahoma's fantastic. <laughs> my my favorite thing to watch live is women's softball. And in fact, there's one of my sponsors right yeah. there, College of Southern Nevada. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so those guys, I, I go down, I've got my banner on the home run wall for the baseball team and the softball team, this big uh-huh. 10 foot by 8 foot thing. And, and I go there and I'll, I'll get to call the games, right? I'll get to go in the booth and call the games sometimes. But the energy in women's softball is unlike anything else. The only oh, yeah. thing, the, the closest thing to what I've ever seen live is Japanese baseball live play by play when you're there because every pitch is like the World Series. It's a party over there. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, <sighs> buddy. That is a whole different world, and it's a fun one too. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's fun. Yeah. All right. All right. So. We're coming back here in about 10 seconds. Let me get this thing ready. I hope you're enjoying yourself. It's all fun for me. Cool. Cool. Okay, here we go. 702-799-9935. Or make your selection directly at uppercutchops.com. Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your remaster cell live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP TV. Folks, make sure you check out the sportscircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, our recorded shows, which are a podcast. No, we don't do a podcast. We happen to have podcast mm -hmm. platforms that we actually air our full content on so we don't fix it in the mix or any crap like that it is what it is make sure you check out the sportscircus.com also for our upcoming guests our prior guests and also go to our partners page and check out some of those partners one of those is the college of southern nevada athletics csncoyotes.com for upcoming games and events csncoyotes.com for the college of southern nevada athletics yes An astounding round of applause for them they've been with us since the very beginning we want to wish also their former athletic director, Mr. Dexter Irvin, a happy and healthy retirement as they bring in the new regime. Great people, a great outfit over there. And when you're next time you're in the Vegas Valley, make sure to check out the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Great facilities, great volleyball, basketball, baseball, softball, women's softball. I want to talk about women's softball. Here with the great Mark Collins, two-time Super Bowl champion from the New York Football Giants. Mark, what do you like about women's softball? I enjoy the excitement. I mean, when I was at Fullerton, we had a great softball team as well. So I played a little baseball at Fullerton. Some of my friends played baseball, softball. So in, in jest, I tried to hit a softball because I was a baseball player. I couldn't touch it. They make that ball move so just ridiculous. And I was a pretty decent baseball player, I like to think. But it's, it was awesome. One thing I do not like, well, yeah, I, you know softball. Why... In women's softball, they don't alleviate the four-pitch walk. In so women's softball, instead of intentional walking, they got to pitch four pitches, and they shouldn't do that. Because in, because in baseball, they don't. In, 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 in situated men's baseball, they don't. But in women's softball, they do. And I think it's quite a crap because, well, you want to save arms in men's baseball, but what, women's arms not important? Yeah. I hate that. I okay. just hate it. But that's, All right. that's one of the things I hate. All right, I'll hold, hold that thought because I'm, I'm going to give you the what it looks like from the pitcher side of it. I'm a former pitcher, and I can tell you this much. They should never allow the intentional pass in baseball to go without pitches. Do you know how hard it is to throw half speed when you're on the hill? Hold the phone because it don't take a lot of effort. It's hard to, to really dial it down right and throw out of the strike zone when you're so locked in on throwing yep. that ball over the plate at a high rate of speed buddy that is very difficult they should never allow okay you want to go to first go to first you should have to go exactly. through the motions because that pitcher in many cases in baseball they'll throw the ball over the catcher's head or off to the left or right and chaos ensues they should absolutely execute on those without question well that's what i'm saying the, the women should have the same rules as the men because I'm talking about saving arms, right? I, I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about saving arms. Because in, in pro in baseball, in college men's baseball, the intentional walk, they get the walk without throwing a pitch. They just have the same for the women. Saving they arms. Should. Well, look, yes. you're, you're a former baseball player, yeah? So think, yeah. About, think about the idea. Now, I know before I would, as a starting pitcher, I would throw the ball literally a hundred times before the game even starts, right? I got long toss, short toss, bullpen session. I got all that crap, right? But the reality is those four pitches, and you're not going to intentionally walk people five, six, seven times during the game anyway. Four pitches is not going to end the world. So I think they absolutely should throw that ball to the catcher because they're throwing it at half speed, and they're just basically lobbing the ball in. Okay, Sal. Come on, okay. man. I, we're not going to agree, but it's like it's like having a car, right? A vintage car. You want the least miles driven in that car, right? So let's say, eh, you know, you want to you want to show your car if you want to drive it down the street, and it's a mile. It's a vintage car. So would you drive that that mile? Every other day, every day, every day, or would you walk it to go get what you need? Save the car, save an arm. It's the same thing. You want to protect your pitch. That's how I look at it. Now, in those four or eight pitches, intentional walks, let's say it throwing some just snaps in between those intentional pitches, those walks in softball. 
Yes, it can happen in the fast pitch. Yes, I get it. But why risk it? Why? Put the lady, put the lady on base. And then start fresh, go fast again. That's how I see it. How do you feel about pitch clocks? And you, sir? How do you feel about pitch clocks? I, I honestly, I, I kind of like it. <laughs> I okay. kind of like it. Okay. How do you feel about bigger bases? I like it. Have you been stepped on by clean? Have you been cleaned before by somebody? It hurts. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I know. Th- I know that one. How do you feel about a second, a guy on second, starting the tenth inning? Starting tenth inning, what? Extra inning baseball game, Major League Baseball. They'll start a guy on second base. The guy who made the last out is the runner at, at second base to start the tenth inning. Oh, uh, they're trying to trying to. Expedite the game. How do you feel about it? I I I I, I don't like it much. That's too much of a change okay. for me. So I don't like feel, that much. Mark, how do you feel about netting around the entire lower bowl at a baseball game? In the outfield? Nope, in the lower bowl from foul pole to foul pole and foul territory. I don't like that either. Okay. Why am I asking you these these questions? Because number one, look, I don't like change in baseball. Growing up playing baseball, we went to the ball game to go watch the ball game. We didn't go there to take selfies and crap like that. Oh, hey, I'm here at the game. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I don't give a damn about that. You know what I care about? I care about the ball game. Folks, if you're going to go to a game... Go to the game. If you go to a football game and you've got the superstar here on the field, here's Mark. He's doing his thing. He's picking people off. He's knocking people down. His team's winning Super Bowls. You don't want to have people look in the crowd there and they're busy looking at their phone doing this garbage. No, you want them watching the game because that's what they're there for, right? But Sal. Come on, be at the game. Sal, no, no, Sal. Believe it or not, sometimes change is good. It is. Sometimes it's good. If I need change for a dollar, it's good. Sal, come on, man. <laughs> some, in some elements of all sports, change is, change is good. For instance, in football, I love the two-point play Yeah, in, in, in pro ball. I think it's great. I, I like it, too. I the do. one I like even more, and it's, it's coming, believe it or not. You mark my words. I think it was the XFL. They got a three-point play. If you back it up. Uh, to the 25-yard line. You ever see that? No. So, if you, okay, you have, you have three options. You can kick the field goal from f- five yards. You can go for two on the 10-yard line. Or you go for three points, <coughs> I think, on the 20, 25-yard line. I think it's awesome. What that does, it gives, it gives every team a legitimate shot to win in the end. Okay, I love that. I, I absolutely love that. I, you know what I want to see in basketball? I want to see a four-point shot from half court. Okay. That, and what is that called, Sal? Change. Right. Sometimes change we were, is good. Hey, you're right, but that's a very 50,000-foot <laughs> view. Come on, man. I, what I'm talking about is traditional things at Ball games, but but now changing certain rules for certain things. I mean, look, basketball, everybody can slam dunk the ball. Raise it to 10 feet. I don't give a damn. Make it harder to dunk the ball. Hey, do something. It's too easy to score, right? In today's yeah. time, they don't even play any defense. Not like back in the 80s, 90s, whatever, where it was a lot a lot harder hand checking. There was, it was, it's a very different game. We talked about that for a little bit. Look, we've got a few minutes left in the segment, but I want to ask your opinion on basketball and why certain things happen now as they didn't. Remember, you mentioned something about a center. Why is this guy the best center or not the best center? Pick that up. Well, a lot of my friends were talking about Jokic and how good he was, the best center in the game ever. I'm like, wait a minute, man. You guys just hit this here and here now over the last maybe two or three or four years. Great player, don't get me wrong. But man, back in my day, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Hakeem Olajuwon, Patrick Ewing, a lot of great centers. Bill Russell, these guys, Will Chamberlain, 
these guys are awesome. Jokic is a great player. Don't get me wrong. He has a long way to go. I mean, long way to go. That dude, he but, would get used by every one of those guys that you mentioned. Yeah, plus, uh, plus Shaquille O'Neal. Can you imagine Shaq, Shaq bodying yeah. him up? Oh God! It's just it's amazing how some people just just focus on the here and now. We talk about you know the Jordan Lebron debate. Man, look, I mean, I think mean, if you get that level, do what you did for over ten years at a consistent level, you're great to me. And these and Lebron's been doing this was twentieth year, whatever it is. Michael Jordan has his stats speak for themselves. To me, the best, the greatest basketball player that I've seen in my lifetime, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's couldn't stop the sky hook. Not. Nobody could stop the sky hook. No, and he didn't have a three point shot either, right? <laughs> didn't need it. That guy could touch the ball and score at will. And Will Chamberlain was the same thing. You just look, there are different players, great players at different levels, at different positions in the game. Maybe the best two guard in the game was Jordan. Maybe the best point guard in the game was Magic Johnson. I don't know. It's not up to me to decide. But I'll tell you what, Mark, we've got a minute left here. I want you to tell everybody how they could follow you. We want to bring you back. Hopefully you'll come back. But tell everybody how they could follow you and so forth. Sure, you can find me on uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, at 25sports, number 2, F-I-V-E Sports. Uh, On on Facebook, Mark Collins. On LinkedIn, Mark Collins. Uh, my company, Two Five Sports, where we help we help student athletes uh, gain sports scholarships, uh, give them the uh, digital profile to send to colleges that fit the, the player's criteria instead of waiting for a, a school to look look at them. Male and female sports. That is Two Five Sports dot com. And uh, yeah, man, I would love to come back. I, I like chopping it up like this. I live for this stuff. I've been doing it for a minute, but I mean, it's not not what I planned on doing. But guess what? I'm doing it anyway, and I'll just keep drinking that damn Kool-Aid because at the end of the day, it's fun. And I don't care about what we go over. Let's just go over. Let's chop it up. Let's have some fun because I'm not worried about losing a sponsor. Who gives a damn? Let's give people what they really should be hearing, and that is real information, not, oh, well, this is what the sponsor wants us to say. I don't give a damn about that. Well, guess what, Mark? It's been a pleasure having you on, and we'll certainly do this again. And, well, shoot, everybody else, we'll see you in about 23 hours right here on your favorite station. So until then, so long, everyone. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com